Hi, I'm Chris Brenhaver and I'm the Senior Speaker Design Engineer here at, at PS Audio and today I'm, I'm back in our sales office here and uh, we're talking tech, we're talking speaker technology, one of my, my favorite topics uh, and I can talk for hours. But we're going to keep these videos to five or ten minutes and hopefully you can get some nuggets of, of uh, insight into to my thoughts on some of this stuff. So today we're talking about um, speaker cone materials. Does speaker cone materials matter? What are the benefits or, or caveats of different, different cone materials? And um, that's an interesting topic because you know, one of the biggest things that's changed in speakers you know, over the years is actually material science. And the, the fundamentals of, of a moving coil speaker are from the 1920s. And really what's changed from then to now is uh, primarily um, material science is what's, what's improved performance. I mean, we also have greater understanding of a lot of other things, but the physical thing that's changed in speakers, I mean, of course we have different form factors and different applications for them, but, um, you know, the cone material itself actually has a huge impact on, uh, on those things. Funny thing is, they started from a pretty great place, um, you know, the, the kinds of, of qualitative things you're looking for uh, in a speaker cone are, um, you know, low to moderate mass. Um, you know, you want to have enough mass to have uh, the system resonance uh, that you want so it'll play low bass or w whatever the case may be if it's a mid-range. Um, so fairly low mass, again, mass and, and sensitivity are, are opposed to one another, so low mass is a good thing. Um, stiffness, you know, is an important factor. So. Um, a system with higher Young's modulus or higher stiffness um, will have a higher frequency of breakup. Um, and what is breakup? Well, that's a, uh, an audio term for um, when the cone in a speaker is playing uh, as a pure piston. It's, it's moving all in one continuous piece. Uh, and then it transitions to actually resonating in sections. So instead of just moving in and out, it actually is um, acting like a bell where it, it is resonating in, in multiples of itself in different pie-shaped sections, for instance. Um, there's also other types of resonances like um, a bell mode type resonance where it's actually, you know, physically flexing or trying to fold. And so um, having the material be quite stiff is important. Uh, and then the third th thing that would be, uh, you know, a, a a quality of cones that you're looking for is internal damping. And, and by that, um, it means that when the system is in breakup, how does it behave? Does it have a giant um, resonance where it rings like a bell? Or is it fairly well controlled? And that internal damping uh, is, is also critical to, to sound quality. So, um, you know, the ideal cone would, would have all of those things. It would be low mass, it would be um, high stiffness and high internal damping. But, you know, as an industry, um, you know, speakers are, are a good size industry, but not as compared to, you know, things like aerospace or, um, you know, architectural composites or other things. And so we don't really pioneer a lot of the materials here. There, there, there's, you know, exceptions to that. But, um, you know, the traditional cone materials are things like paper. And when they say paper, they don't really mean paper like you would write on uh, for notebook paper. It's more of like a dense felt um, with um, additional, you know, additives. So it's, it's paper pulp, but there's, you know, oftentimes, you know, other things put in there to improve that stiffness and, and damping. Things like you know, acrylic or Kevlar fibers or carbon fiber or Kapok or all these other things that are um, some of out of the textile industry. Um, you know, but, uh, but paper is still one of the best materials for, for speaker cones. Um, but, you know, there are issues with paper. I mean, originally the reason why a lot of manufacturers went away from paper, like Kef, for instance, pioneered plastic speaker cones. Um, and it was because that there's tons of manufacturing steps to paper and those are all opportunities for um, variants, for, for um, you know, quality control issues. And uh, in the case of making something out of plastic sheet and, and thermoforming it or vacuum forming it or whatever, you can get extreme um, 
you know, consistency between units. Um, so that was their original sort of methodology there, but also, um, you know, plastics like uh, like polypropylene and, and others are, um, you know, pretty excellent as far as internal damping. They're not particularly stiff, um, you know, or you know, super low mass or something like that. But they are um, certainly have their place. Um, you know, other materials that are, have been used in speakers are are things like metals. So you'll see, you know, aluminum. Um, which we're using in, in some, uh, some subwoofer and woofer cones, um, and um, you know, mag magnesium or beryllium you know, to, as, as things get more exotic with lower mass and higher stiffness, um, different treatments of those, um, those metals. And metals are certainly very, very stiff, um, but are worse off as far as um, their, their mass. You know, their, um, there's, physical limits on how thin you want to go with metals just because they can they can deform or be uh, harder to, to handle in that way and then also um, when they do break up they have big resonances they're not very well damped and there's different techniques that companies do for damping like machining the cone and surface treatments and all kinds of other stuff uh, coating it in different materials um, but um, you know I personally am not in favor of low damped cones and the, the reason is, uh, if there's a large resonance, you know, in a uh, in a cone, even if you filter it out all the way, the cone's own, the speaker's own distortion products will can excite it. And um, if you have something like a 20 dB resonance, like some of these really stiff metal cones have, um, it only takes a small amount of distortion in order to bring that resonance back up, basically. So um, you know, damping is pretty critical. Um, you know, there are, um, uh, you know, cost is certainly a factor in here too, I didn't mention, but a lot of these super high stiffness, you know, um, or exotic cones, you know, or diamond or, you know, carbon nanotubes or all these things that you're seeing, you know, people start working on, um, it, it, there's a certain level of practicality in that of, okay, what, what am I getting here for, for the dollar as well? Um, so, um, you know, value has to factor in the equation here, not just, but, you know, just from an engineering perspective, um, you know, there's, um, you know, in addition to paper and plastic and, and um, metal, you're having, you know, woven composites, which are, again, plastics, um, things like aramid fibers like Kevlar or, um, you know, have also have a great place in the market and then you know composites of, of those so you'll see things like um, a skin of an, a Nomex or, or Kevlar with then a foam or um, you know other element and then you know an, a constrained layer of, of another um, you know paper skin or Kevlar skin so there's there's structural composites that are used too that can kind of tilt tilt the sort of stiffness versus damping thing um, in interesting ways. So, um, so yeah, there, there are, um, cone material actually has a pretty tremendous, um, you know, influence on the sound of, of a speaker, um, more than you might think. Um, not to say that any of those approaches are the, the only way to go. There, there's great examples of, of each of those technologies and bad examples also, but, um, you know, if I were to look at, you know, what is my ideal mid-range, it, it wouldn't be something that's super, super stiff, super, you know, um, undamped. Uh, it would be, you know, in the other direction um, for me. But, uh, but you know, there's other engineers that think differently. So it's, it's all a matter of, of optimizing the compromises, and that's sort of the art, art and craft of this whole thing. So, um, yeah, cone material, an important factor. And... Uh, Hope that that was uh, something that you guys got a little bit of info from and look forward to talking with you more. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.